checked. Hmm. <laughs> king me. There's no king me here. This is chess, not checkers. King me. <laughs> king me. <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> oh, you're something else. <laughs> You know, you're sleeping outside tonight. That smell good. Just smell that. I'm gonna bring that to a boil pretty soon. As soon as it's dead. Here we go. You're supposed to be helping. All right. Read the next one. If the four o'clock train leaves Boston at 60 miles an hour and the three o'clock train leaves New York at 40 miles an hour. It's easy, man. Read times time equals distance. Who cares? Why don't these people just cough up their money and fly? <laughs> Hey, Grandpa, you know anything about algebra? Of course I know everything about algebra. And fortunately, I'm sworn to secrecy. Cut it out! There's heavy armory coming in this area. What's the matter with you clowns? Fighting two on a couch? Get down, get down. I'm gonna call for an airstrike. I hate to do this, it's gonna clean our clocks, but... <laughs> okay. Red beaver to blue fox. Red beaver to blue fox. Do you read me? I can't make him out. He's going to fly over us anyway. Use your stuff there. Oh, choppers are coming in. Look, the chopper's over there. Why does he wave at me that way? Well, I'm brilliant. I fixed it. See, all I needed was this brain and this wrench. We don't need to pay some guy to come out here and fix our water heater. <laughs> I'm worried about you, Dwight. Yeah? Well, I'm a little worried about you, too, Dad. Why is that? I think your commute is too much. You know, the one you make between here and Mars? <laughs> Say, did you guys do your homework? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now you go do it right now. Ah, Dwight, Dwight, listen, I gotta talk to you. I'm serious about this now. You gotta take some time out. Need a vacation from the school, short one. Maybe, you know, a few hours here and there. I can take care of the kids. They're no problem. I'll think up some games, something to do with them. And uh, you get downtown, just have a good time. You understand? There's a great looking redhead down there at the Rialto. And she's a nice young lady. She's close to your age, flaming hair and big green eyes and lots of popcorn around her. She's in the kind of... <laughs> Concession down there. Why don't you think about it? I'll watch the kids. I'm not uptight. I've already got plans for Saturday night anyway. I promised Ben I'd take him to play miniature golf. Whoa. Miniature golf. Windmill madness. That place is for geeks, Mr. D. Oh, yeah? Well, what do you two studs got lined up, huh? You gonna call up Debbie Kester 11 times and hang up? Hmm? <laughs> then maybe uh, watch four or five hours of television and... Eat cereal? Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. How do you know about Debbie Kessler? I read the newspaper. 
Act right. How about you and me going out tonight? Oh, Dad, I don't need to do anything, really. It's Western week on TV. Look, they got high noon on tonight, huh? We can make some popcorn. I mean, what more does a guy need? <laughs> hey, my parents never have any fun either. Most of the time, they just stay in the bedroom with the door locked. <laughs> And you know, Rigo, you must never, ever disturb them. Who cares about this test? I'm never gonna need algebra. I don't like trains. I don't care about fruit. And I don't care how many guys it takes to load a truck. That's a union problem. It's not that bad, Rob. I mean, if you just think of algebra as another language, like French or Spanish. But it's not a language. Okay, then think of it as a sport. You like sports, don't you? Yeah but I'm a lousy athlete. Okay, then just think of it as math, all right? Only much, much harder. Maybe I'm not the best teacher for Robbie, Mr. D, but I could help you with your Spanish. Oh. <laughs> Gracias, Rigo. Pero no. Habla espanol muy bueno. <laughs> That's real good, Mr. D. <laughs> Rob, what say uh, you bring your books in here, then after dinner we can tackle that stuff together, huh? Just you and I. Wrong. Why? Because when you try to teach me, all I hear is years of frustration and disdain built up in your voice. My learning mechanism freezes. Mm. It's true. We've talked about it. I can't believe this. I worked with Robbie for two hours on this stuff. I can't believe I only got a 70. He got a 70. You already passed algebra in 1965. Excuse me, Dwight. You're trying to tutor your own child? I was a teacher, Carol. Dwight, parents make terrible tutors. It never works. Ever take driving lessons from your father? Yeah, I sure did. Yeah. Don't worry about the brakes, Dwight. Eventually, you'll run out of gas anyway. <laughs> I rest my case. Look, I don't want to pay someone else to come over and teach my own son algebra. Why, you can't do everything. I know you think you can, but... Carol's right. Fight the bullet and hire the kid a tutor. Lester Hill's pretty good over at Kennedy. Lester drinks. We went out for a while. Can we stick with algebra here, ladies? You know who would be very good? Miss Jurgen. Cosmo Jurgen, she's excellent. Yeah, Cosmo. She might be very good with Robbie. Might be good with Dwight, too. <laughs> Cosmo Jurgen, she's that substitute, right? Oh, come on, Dwight. You can play dumb better than that. All right, well, um, I'll write a note and have her see me. You got some paper? Don't you ever come prepared. Sorry. Teacher humor. <laughs> These test scores, they're pathetic. Uh, what am I gonna have to teach every class and every subject? Huh? In Japan, students go to school all day and then come home and then go to Juku. Juku, what's that, radio school? Crime school. Crime school? Cram. Cram school. <laughs> students go to study how to pass tests. Oh, well, what good is passing a test if you don't really know the subject? Japanese logic. What good is eating fish and rice your whole life and smoking three packs a day? Come in. Oh, you're busy. Oh, no, he's not. I'm leaving. I know you want my hair and I want yours. <laughs> Why does she think I want her hair? Oh, she's paranoid. She used to think I wanted it. I got your note, and thank you very much, but I couldn't possibly tutor your son. Wait, wait where are you going? I mean, can't we, can we at least discuss this? Well, we can, but I'd only be humoring you. Oh, well, 
Humor me. Well, I do know Robbie. He's a very nice boy. Oh, he's a wonderful boy. He's bright, sensitive, and I'm not just saying that as a parent, but as his father. <laughs> You'd have to guarantee that we'd have a quiet place to work. Oh, no problem. Yeah, you got it. So, uh, this means you'll do it, huh? No, I told you I was just humoring you. <laughs> I can't take this job. Why not? Because you probably came to me because you probably already made the mistake of trying to tutor him yourself. <laughs> no, see, you're wrong already. You're lying to me. Your eyes are serious and your mouth is trying to laugh. <laughs> Look, Mr. Davis, if I tutor Robbie, his grades will improve and you're gonna resent me. What are you talking about? I know this. I'm an excellent tutor. I'm also an excellent judge of character. Oh, really? Uh... <clears throat> and um, what, do you, what do you think about me? I think you're an intelligent man. You're probably fascinated by Westerns. You're very close to your father. And you're a teacher at heart, and that's really where you'd rather be right now. Oh, yeah? What was my nickname in high school? Look, Miss Jurgen, if you don't tutor Robbie in algebra, somewhere down the road, he's gonna mess up an equation, and then the planet is gonna fall off his axis and crash right into the sun, and it's gonna be on your conscience. You're gonna have to live with it for the rest of your life. Ooh, guilt. That works on me. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> but only on a trial basis. No, no, I don't like doing things on a trial basis, so we'll just try it out for a while, see how it goes. <laughs> I charge $13 an hour. 13 fine. I should be getting 15. 15, you got it. I should have asked for 18. <laughs> hey, guys, get over here and sit down. Learn something. Learn what happens to a man when he draws five aces in Dodge City. Oh, come on, Dad. We've seen this a million times. No, you haven't. This is good stuff. No, it isn't. It stinks. <laughs> Look at that guy. Look how frail he is. Little thin guy and a man with a neckerchief. <laughs> And look at him. He's got sequins on his boots. No wonder they're shooting at him. Pay attention. And look at those girls. That ought to tell you something. And don't ever look up at those girls like that. Yeah, they're the meow girls. They're motioning to him to come upstairs. Wonder why he is going up there. Oh, that's the marshal now. All right, marshal. We know you're out there. You know we're in here, but we're not coming out. You'll never take us alive, Marshal! You hear me? Bam! Oh, right through the door! Oh. I just gotta see the man who shot me. I just gotta see the... Howdy, partner. Oh. Is uh, Robbie here? Oh, yeah. I didn't mean to bother you. I just came to see where Robbie and I will be working, so I'll know what to bring. Nice place. How many families actually live here? Well, just us, you know, but it's, but it's quiet. He wanted quiet, so uh, we put clothing all over the floor so you wouldn't hear the footsteps. You weren't kidding, were you? She's tutoring me, and you're not? I'm afraid so, Rob. <laughs> you must be Dwight's father. Yes, I'm Gunnery Sergeant Davis, USMC, Uncle Sam's Miserable Children. My last uh, active duty was in Paris, in the embassy. Mmm. What a wonderful... It's like a little porcelain mitt. Mm. Mm, 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 the ring, the ring. I'll carry that with me always. It's uh, nice to meet you. Uh, this must be Ben and Charlie. Want to play football? Oh, I, I'd love to, Ben, but I got to warn you, I, I used to live in a sorority house, and I'm, I'm real good. Do you have a problem with losing? Yeah, he does. Uh, then we better not. Okay. 
All boys, huh? Yep. You still want the job? No, I like boys. Uh, where are we going to be working? Probably the kitchen. There's a table. Would you like to see? Sure. Also, I, I want you to know right off the bat that nobody was born knowing algebra. I believe that. You know, Dwight, you ought to marry her. And if you don't, just take her on a honeymoon. I don't believe this. What, did a tornado come in here and suck all the laundry out of this room? <laughs> Cleaned up a little. It's nice. Hey, Dwight, you seen my purple heart? <laughs> huh? You didn't see it? Uh, she's not here yet, huh? You've got to be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Look at you clowns, the Sweater Brothers. <laughs> you look real nice, Rob. Thanks. So do you. Thank you. We both look great. And we're young. <laughs> and tall. Oh, sweet. She should be here. Yeah. I think I hear a car. It wasn't her. We're like a pack of dogs that just heard the can opener. <laughs> Another car. There she is. Let's get back in the house. <laughs> Now, this is ridiculous. I mean, Dad, you and Ben and Charlie, you don't need to be here. What do you mean? Of course I need to be here. This is probably my last chance to take a course in algebra. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why do you need to be here? I'm the one getting tutored. Yeah, but I'm the one that got her to come over. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> Hi, guys. Here, let me help you with that. Are you going to be in a parade? Would you like to be on my float? Come on, scram, you guys. Now. That'll be all, Sergeant. You're dismissed. You don't dismiss me. I'm your daddy. Come on, Robbie. Let's get to work. Sure. Dad, give me that. <laughs> Rigo, why are you eavesdropping? I'm trying to hear what they're saying. Come on over here and... Tell me why you guys like Miss Yergin so much. Because she's just nice. You know, you can always talk to Miss Yergin. Yeah. You ever hang up on her? <laughs> a couple of times. But she's got a much nicer hello than Debbie Kessler. How come you can't talk to Debbie Kessler? You talk to Debbie Kessler and she automatically thinks you like her. Well, sometimes it's nice to let a girl know that you like her. Then you can find out if she likes you. But if she doesn't, who wants to find that out? I love algebra. <laughs> Hi, Rigo. Hi, miss. Can we go now, Dad? Yeah, oh, just uh, hang on a second, Ben. You're in an awfully big hurry, Ben. Where are you going? Oh, I told him I'd take him to play miniature golf. You know, just us two guys. Want to come with us? <laughs> hey, Ben, now, come on. You don't ask a lady out with no notice. No, that's OK. Ben can ask me out with no notice at all. <laughs> So let's go. I thought you and Rigo weren't going. We'll go if she goes. Well, isn't miniature golf for geeks? Says who? <laughs> Dan, why don't you uh, run over and get us a couple of sodas? Hi. And make sure and get a box, too, OK? And okay. Charlie, you go with him. And don't run. 
Well, you're only down by one stroke. Oh, uh, that's okay. You can just win this hole. Oh, no. Come on. This is an easy hole. Huh? There's nothing to this. Why? Right through the little doors there, huh? I am not going to hit a golf ball through a church. Why? Is there a wedding going on in there? <laughs> I was almost a nun. Well, that's a hell of a thing to tell a guy on a first date. Oh, is this a date? Well, it depends. Were you almost a nun? Yes, I, I was almost a lot of things, but I was this close to being a nun. I made it through as a postulate, then a novice. I quit before I took my final vows. You're serious? I shouldn't have told you. Now you're going to look at me funny. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to look at you funny. I, I'm not going to look at you. I, I admit I, I, I have this tremendous urge to confess, but <laughs> no. You can't even talk to me anymore. I can talk to you. You think I'm strange now, don't you? No, no, I don't, I don't think that. I, I wasn't thinking that. What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking that uh, you're tutoring my son. Uh, you sometimes teach at my school. You're uh, tremendously not bad looking. <laughs> and uh, you almost were uh, a... <laughs> Go ahead. Say it. <laughs> Cosmo the... N <laughs> Cosmo the teaching, golfing, <laughs> laughing, <laughs> Do that again. Thank you. What do you say we just uh, skip this hole and play the next one twice? You mean the shoe? Yeah, the shoe. <laughs> you know, I was this close to being a cobbler. <laughs> well, let me tell you guys something. It was something else. I mean, <laughs> Dwight and this little girl, you know, she's a petite little thing and she's terribly skinny. And of course, he was all over her like a tarantula and a clump of bananas. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, he turned her every way from <laughs> Oh, hi, Dwight. I just tell him about my sweater. <laughs> you were telling him about Cosmo and me, weren't you? What did you tell him? <laughs> Thank you.